Download DRM movies for free, but that's probably a bad idea given the FBI can legally hack a PC. Plus, how to spot a credit card skimmer and more. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for June 28, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, our privacy, and internet freedom. If you haven't checked out our Patreon page recently, we have been posting various additional content there, such as stories that we can't necessarily fit into our weekly episode, so definitely check it out and consider becoming a patron of ThreatWire at patreon.com slash threatwire. So first off, the FBI. They seized a server that has been hosting a dark website called Playpen, which served up child porn way back in 2014. Now, since that time, the FBI decided to keep the site online and effectively distribute malware to anyone who accessed it, collecting MAC addresses, operating systems, etc., etc. So late last week, news spread that because of this ongoing investigation, a federal court ruled that users should have, and I quote, no expectation of privacy on a personal computer inside their own home, and no warrant is needed for the FBI to hack a computer remotely because it wouldn't be protected under the Fourth Amendment. The case is with the United States of America versus Edward Joseph Matish, who is being charged for four counts of child porn. Senior staff attorney of the EFF, Mark Rumold, said, quote, the implications for the decision, if upheld, are staggering. Law enforcement would be free to remotely search and seize information from your computer without a warrant, without probable cause, or without any suspicion at all. So currently, we give our IP address to third parties every day when browsing the web. So according to the courts, that is not protected under Fourth Amendment rights. But a warrant should still be necessary to hack a computer system by the FBI. I mean, since this included information captured by the FBI also includes additional information about the system of users, this brings to light an important matter. If the ruling, which was made by a federal district court in Virginia, is upheld, it could mean that the FBI or other law enforcement could search your PC without warrant or cause for any reason. Any reason at all. The security and privacy rights of citizens could be negatively affected by courts that not only do not understand the technology, but also tend to fear it. On May 24th, two cybersecurity researchers alerted Google of a problem in the Chrome browser that would allow a user to bypass DRM restrictions under the Widevine technology. So this technology basically allows Chrome, as well as a few other popular browsers, to stream encrypted videos, such as videos from Netflix or Amazon Prime. Widevine handles a key exchange between the provider and the user so that the stream goes through on DRM'd content. The vulnerability could allow someone to download a copy of a movie or a TV show as it plays in the Chrome browser. Google has yet to fix the vulnerability with a patch, but they have been watching the issue. The problem, if patched, could still be reverse engineered to work on a build of the open source Chromium browser, which also uses Widevine. Now, both researchers are waiting 90 days to fully disclose how the hack works publicly so that Google can fix it in the meantime, and hopefully they do. Komodo has come under fire a few times in recent years for their lack of security in regards to self-signed digital certificates for websites, as well as a few other issues. Now they've tried to trademark Let's Encrypt, which is the name of the nonprofit that issues certificates for free. So Komodo filed applications for three different trademarks, including the words Let's Encrypt, and did not appear to be backing down anytime soon. According to their CEO, Let's Encrypt was piggybacking on their business model with 90-day free digital trial certificates, calling the nonprofit non-ethical and saying that copyrights can't be decided by loyal but blind followers who bully an enterprise by their tweets. I mean, really? The CEO said that. Luckily, Komodo did change their mind and abandoned all three of the trademark applications as stated in updates on the 24th. It kind of sounds like to me, that someone was trying to rain on the nonprofit parade, but the negative response that they received made them back off, and it's a good thing that they did. Self-checkout lanes are found all over the United States, as well as other countries, for quick payments of goods at thousands of different retailers. Unfortunately, they too can be hacked. Krebs on Security wrote about these Ingenico credit card terminals and the skimmers that were being used on them last month. And this month, Ingenico themselves posted a tutorial about how to spot them as a customer. Now, luckily, it's pretty easy. The Ingenico ISC 250 terminals with the skimmers appear larger. They cover backlighting on the keys, and the signature pen cannot rest easily in the space provided for it. 
Using these dead giveaways can help you properly identify one while you're buying your groceries, but for how long? I mean, who knows? The unfortunate part about releasing these details publicly is that the scammers are very likely to try to improve the skimmers so that they aren't as easily identified. But do what I do though, you know, pull on different things like the credit card swiper and the pin pads. You can look for cameras, check for weird Bluetooth near ATMs. That was actually a thing that Krebs on Security wrote an article about. And you can cover your pin code too on uh, credit card terminals as well as ATMs. Now, obviously none of those are fail proof, but it's honestly better than just not doing anything. Before I go, I want to give a huge, huge thanks to everybody who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value in this, you can spare a few cents per episode. Consider being a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire, and we will feature your adorable cats and dogs and all those different fur babies because they are super, super cute, and I love seeing them every single week. So make sure you send in new pictures because I want to see new ones. I hope that you will contribute to keep the show coming completely independent, completely ad-free. We would love to reach our next goal so that we can create an RSS of the show. So do me a favor this week. Hashtag, hashtag threat wire, <laughs> just threat wire on your favorite social network and then share the show with your friends. Let's see how far we can make threat wire go. I think it's a really important show and I hope you do too. As always, ThreatWire.net is the place where all of our episodes live, along with an awesome list of Patreon contributors. Thank you so much for those guys. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.